What a year you're having. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah no. It's, it's amazing. It's I mean, good to be alive, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, great. you're you're having quite a year, and you were great in the eyes of Tammy Faye. Thank you're you. great in Tick, Tick, Boom, and Spider-Man, and, like, what the most successful movie in all time or something. It's crazy. <laughs> it's pretty so, weird. So, Golden Globe already. You won a Golden Globe. Now you're getting yeah. Oscar buzz. <laughs> I mean, we should just say Oscar buzz. You'll be nominated for sure. Oops. And, and uh, you, I mean, you can't. How for do you? sure, for sure. <laughs> so Golden Globes, uh, unfortunately, was not. It was. It was not live. So you found out on Twitter. So actually, I was on the phone with my director, with Lin Manuel Miranda, who directed Tick Tick Boom, um, who we all love um, and know. And. Uh, and I started getting te some text messages, and I just kind of like briefly glanced at my phone while I was driving, and I said, "Hey, Lynn, I won the Golden Globe," and he was <laughs> like, and he said, "Oh, that's great, buddy. Let me tell you about my vacation." And uh, so it was kind of like a, it was a very sweet kind of, uh, I, and and but later on, like 24 hours later, I sent him a voice note, kind of semi sobbing, and yeah. saying, "If if you had told me th three or four years ago that I would be not only in a musical directed by." my musical theater hero singing and playing piano and doing all that stuff, but that it would be seen by so many people and it would be touching so many people. And then on top of that, to have people giving you things, saying well done for it, like gold mugs and statues and all those kind of things, I would have, I would have called you a liar to your face and I would have slapped you with a fish and I would have been very upset with you for lying to me. And so I was deep, I'm just very deeply moved and kind of touched that I get to, uh, I get to be a part of this film and to have it received in this way. Well, you're you're brilliant in it, and to to think that you didn't sing before this, you didn't play piano before this. I mean, the dialogue alone, like everything that you're doing in it. But in, in case people don't know the story, it's a it's based on a true story. It's a it's a true story about. Yeah, it's about a man called Jonathan Larson. For people who aren't familiar with, yeah, some of you are. As well. um, and uh, you know, he he wrote Rent. Um, which, which was the, the musical that, that changed musicals forever, kind of brought musical theater and, and rock music together and revolutionized the medium. And he wrote a musical just before Rent called Tick, Tick, Boom, which is what our film is, is based on. And basically, he wrote it in response to all of the failure that he had experienced in his life. And he was, it was like the industry was telling him to give up every single day. He would wake up every morning to a stack of rejection letters from every producer, theater company, record label, and he would still sit at his keyboard, sing and play in his downtown New York apartment because he knew deep down that he had something very, very special to give to the world. So I, I, it's, it's a, it's a, so it's the story of him realizing that he has to follow this dream, even though the world is telling him maybe he should give up. He has to follow it for himself to be a musical theater writer, but also he has to follow it for his community, which was being ravaged by a different, a different pandemic, a different epidemic at the time, which was the AIDS epidemic in the 90s in, in New York City specifically, where, where our story is set. So his community of artists and activists and dancers and singers, they were all, you know, a lot of them were getting sick and dying at a very, very young age. So he, it's in the process, in this musical, he becomes uh, the ally, the activist, the, the voice of this lost generation of artists, and he ends up after this musical writing Rent and changing, changing the world. So and it's, then he didn't live long enough to really enjoy it. It's a remarkable thing for those of you who haven't seen the film. And it, it, he, he dies at the age of 36 of an aortic aneurysm. And he died the night before the first preview of Rent off Broadway. So all his life, <laughs> it's so deeply moving and tragic and just so beautiful because it's like you think about the great artists that never get their flowers while they're alive, but they still wake up every morning because of some strange inner destiny, some strange inner pull that says, I've got to sing, I've got to dance, I've got to create, and everyone is telling me I should give up, but for whatever reason, I have to keep doing it. He didn't know that he was going to write the musical to change all musicals, or maybe somewhere deep down he did. And the fact that he never got to receive those flowers while he was alive makes it even more special that we get to talk yeah. about it now, and that wherever Jonathan is, we can say, we know you, we are so grateful for you, for the music that you left behind, for that unfinished song that you left behind, because anyone who's touched by the ripples of Jonathan Larson, their lives are just enhanced. They are reminded of the beauty and the meaning of life. So this is for John, this is for yeah. John. Well, you, 
you honored him beautifully. Yeah. We'll be back more with Andrew. Yeah. So then Andrew Garfield is here, and uh, then there's that side. There's the, uh, the eyes of Tammy Faye, which is fantastic, and you do an amazing job. Did you know that whole story? Had you seen the documentary before? Yeah, I had seen the documentary, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, narrated by our friend RuPaul Charles, and yeah, I and it's. What a beautiful person she was. And I thought that documentary was so stunning. But so Jessica Chastain, who's, who's playing Tammy Faye, this has been a, pa a passion project of hers for a, a long, long time. And, and so when she asked me to come and help, it was kind of a no-brainer. And you know, so no, it, English people and televangelism, it's not really a, a thing that mixes. Uh, so I was deeply fascinated by that whole kind of world that yeah. is still in existence and people are still sending their money and and yep. it's a fascinating kind of kind of thing and and it, obviously these these are the, the the two of the people Jim Baker and Tammy that kind of invented reality TV really yeah they were the first reality TV family yeah which is but she was amazing she was she was a good beautiful. person oh yeah she was a great ally and just yeah. such such a beautiful person and I, I, I hasten to add you know I am biased because I played Jim but I feel like he was someone that suffered from a kind of collective disease of not enoughness that yeah. we all kind of have a relationship with in yes. some way in our culture we all struggle with some form of not having enough, not being enough, not, not, be, not you know, not feeling enough. Yes. And I think we are encouraged towards that in our culture a little bit. Right. And I think he was this kind of symbol of where that can take you in yeah. terms of excess. And in terms, so I think he was a, a little child inside that just wanted to, a attention and okay. love. And I can agree with that. I, I agree with you on that one. Okay, yeah. Um, Spider-Man, let's talk about that. Okay. So, uh... <laughs> You, you had to lie to so many people. How long did it take to make the movie? It was like a couple of years, right? It, it, how many years did you lie to people? <laughs> that is an unfair framing. <laughs> um, it was, uh, yeah, I lied to people for a good two years, and uh, I lied to the internet for two years, and it felt great. Who knew? But to, besides your agent, who knew that you were doing this? I mean, how hard is that to keep it yeah. to... Like, I mean, it's, it's your family new? Yeah, my dad, my brother. Okay. Um, and, my, and my mother at the time. And yeah, just, just kind of us. Uh -huh. uh, it was fun to keep it secret. Because you know when you're planning a surprise birthday party yes. for someone? Yeah. And they're like, I hate surprises. Tell me, is the party happening? No, seriously, Ellen, don't mess around. Because you know I actually hate surprises. And I can see on your yeah. face, you're just yeah. like, I'm uh, not going to tell you, Mother yeah. Hubbard. You're not going to know. So it felt like I was part of organizing a surprise birthday party for a bunch of people who I knew would appreciate it. Everyone appreciate it. We love seeing you in it.